just to, to throw this out there as, as a, a heads up, I'm going to be presenting from my phone today, which you can see over on the TV over there. Um, I, I might make reference to something on the phone, but I want you to know that's the same thing on the iPad. So the, with, with Apple, the iPad and the iPhone are the same operating system. They've got the same feature sets. Um, for all purposes, it's, it's basically the same device, just different sizes. So anything I'm talking about on the iPhone does apply to the iPad as well. Even if I say iPhone, it still works with iPad. So just a quick overview of some things that we'll talk about today. Um, there's two main areas I'm going to be covering as far as optimizing the device. The first is going to be how to uh, utilize the power settings and, and recognize what's taking up the power on your phone or iPad. Uh, so we're going to look at power settings. I'm going to show you the app usage so you can see what apps are using your battery. Uh, we're going to talk about data, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. and whether or not you want those on or off, and how to turn those on or off. Uh, we'll also talk about screen brightness, which uh, is a huge, huge user of the battery. So we'll show how to adjust the screen brightness and make your battery last a little bit longer. Uh, so we'll talk about how to close those apps, or if you never use it, how to uninstall it. Uh, I am going to talk a little bit about automatic updates as well, and whether or not you want those enabled. Uh, we'll talk about clearing cache data a little bit, um, which is another huge user of the memory. And then when all else fails, or actually just a good practice anyway, every once in a while, uh, restarting the device. So a lot of performance issues with the device, if it's running slow or just doesn't seem right, uh, a lot of that can actually be solved with a simple restart. So we'll cover how to do that as well. All right, jumping into things. So a couple of weeks ago, I went on a chartered fishing trip with my father-in-law. Great time. Th this is actually us, salmon fishing in the Pacific. That's not us salmon fishing in the Pacific. <laughs> this is what I wish it would have been. What it actually ended up being is rolling seas and me grabbing the deck rail and throwing up over the side. Oh, it was eight hours of torture. <laughs> Got a couple of fish though, so it, it was worth it. My father-in-law is the type of guy, he's very, very, very punctual. It was about a two and a half hour drive to get to the port to catch our chartered boat. Uh, so naturally, we left four hours ahead of time. <laughs> this meant that we left at about 12.30 at night um, being 12.30 at night, having not gotten any sleep, and trying to pack for this trip, I forgot the cord for my phone. So we're in the car headed our way over there, and it occurs to me, uh-oh, I can't charge my phone. So what I ended up having to do to try and get through the weekend was I had to maximize as much usage out of that battery as I could. So I minimized everything that was using up power, tried to save the battery for my phone so that at the end of the weekend, the end of this fishing trip, I could send that text to my wife and say, I'm on my way home. Because I would be in trouble if I did not send that text. So I am happy to say that utilizing some of the techniques I'm going to show you here today, I was able to limp my phone through the entire weekend and still had enough battery left that Sunday afternoon when we were on our way back to send my wife that message to say, I love you, I'm on my way home. To which she replied, okay. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to go into in relation to all of this stuff that I'm talking about is settings. Or sometimes it's the button that you might refer to as the, why isn't this thing working? If something's not working on your phone, settings is usually where you're going to find your answer. So. I think we all went in there when we were connecting to the Wi-Fi, but if you don't recognize it, it's this little gear icon that you'll see on your home screen. Uh, a lot of the app management is done through there. So on, on my phone over here, I'm going to go ahead and go into settings. And we'll notice that there's a bunch of different stuff in here. The first place we're actually going to look is 
battery. So on the TV over there, if you're following along or if you're using your own device, we're going to go into the battery settings. And there's a couple of things we're going to take a look at. So one, I want to touch on this real quick, is the low power mode. Um, and it does not show up on my screenshot here, but it is on the TV over there. So under battery percentage, we have low power mode. Low power mode is a setting that you can turn on and the iPhone will automatically just jump to minimizing its usage of the battery. Uh, what this will do is it will turn down the screen brightness, it will uh, disable automatic updating, it will set the screen lock to I believe 30 seconds, so a very quick screen lock. If you're not immediately using the device, it's basically going to lock itself and go into hibernate mode. Uh, Low power mode is great and was certainly a staple that I used to get me through the weekend. Um, another thing about the low power mode is when your phone battery hits 20%, it'll prompt you. It'll say, do you want to use low power mode? And honestly, if you're at 20% and you're not right near a charger, yeah, it's a good idea. I would suggest turning it on. Um, otherwise, what you'll find is that last 20% does not last very long. So, low power mode, very good setting to turn on if you're trying to preserve the length of the battery. So we turn it on to show the green? We yes, yeah, when, okay. when the button next to it is green, that means it's on. Okay. If it's white, that means it's off. So right now, if you look over on the TV, my low power mode is off. I'm going to leave it off because if I turn it on, I'm going to be fighting connecting back and forth to that TV through the whole presentation. And I did make sure to charge my battery a little bit before we started, so I should be fine. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about in this screen is if I scroll down a little bit, and you can see it over here, you'll actually see a percentage of what's been used. So we can see that right now it's showing the last 24 hours what apps have used the battery. So in my case, uh, you'll see that Alien Blue uh, is using about 45% of my battery. That's the app that I use the most. Um, you'll also see Home and Lock Screen is 17%. That has to do with the background stuff that's running on the phone. Um, settings is at 12%. That's kind of high because of doing this class and constantly going into settings. But this gives you more or less a, a breakdown of what's using the battery. And while there's nothing we need to do with that directly, that gives us some good insight into what might be causing some issues. So another story I can tell, my wife had an iPhone and what she found, it was a fairly new phone, but for some reason she couldn't keep it charged. She put it on the charger for 12 hours and as soon as she would take it off, the battery would just die. And we couldn't figure out why. I mean, it wasn't an old phone things should have worked. So we went in and we discovered that 99% of her battery was being taken up by a Facebook app. The Facebook app was malfunctioning and was constantly running, constantly updating and using the battery. <clears throat> so what we were able to do once we identified that was we uninstalled Facebook. Suddenly her phone worked fine again. We were able to charge it, everything was responsive. And then she reinstalled Facebook about a week later, but it seemed to work better that time. If you find that your battery's not charging or not lasting anywhere near long enough, check out the apps, see what's using stuff. And if you find an app that's using uh, an odd amount of the battery, it might be worth it to try uninstalling and reinstalling that app. I was talking about Facebook, I was talking about if you see something that seems to be using a lot of the battery. A couple of things that I want to cover, uh, and, and we'll demonstrate this. Closing apps and uninstalling apps. I've found with some people, um, my mom would be a great example of this. She's got a lot of different apps on her phone, and she never closes them. And eventually what happens is all of these different apps that she has running, they're all running in the background, they're eating up the memory on the phone, they're eating up the battery on the phone. It's just not working right. 
she gives the phone to me, she says, help, I can't figure it out. And then I proceed to go in on the phone and close about 30 different apps that she has running. Um, it's a very easy trap to fall into because in most cases, uh, like right now, I've got the settings app open on my phone. If I just hit the home button, it looks like everything is good. But that settings app is still open. So the way we can close apps, down at the bottom, you have the home button. If you tap the home button twice, then you'll get into this screen, which will show you all of the different apps that you have open. You can scroll back and forth through them. To close an app, once you're in this screen, take an app and swipe up. And that will close it. And then I'll close my Roomba app. Out of curiosity, anybody have a Roomba? Those things are so great. Little robot vacuums. I, uh, I can control mine remotely using the app. My parents are at home watching my son right now. I, I could start up my vacuum and freak him out. <laughs> so again, if you've, if you've noticed that things are, are running a little bit slow, uh, something you might want to do is just double tap the home button and close all the apps that you have open. You might notice that that, that actually improves things. Things will start running a little bit faster. If you shut the power off on the phone, then it'll automatically close everything that's open. If you just let the phone go to sleep, then everything is still running in the background. So uh, how you approach it is kind of your own call. Uh, there's some stuff that I do like to leave open because I revisit it frequently. Um, for instance, Football season hasn't officially started yet, but I've got the ESPN app here, and believe me, once football season starts, that thing is open 24-7, uh, because I'm constantly checking scores, or news, or injury reports. Uh, yeah, I will constantly leave that app running. I know it eats up the battery, I know it's using memory, but I need my football, so. But usually, um, my dad actually has a pretty good habit of, when he's done with an app, he'll just tap the home button and close it, uh, just to make sure that it's not left on running indefinitely. So, if you close everything, but you still notice things are running slow, and you go into that battery uh, usage stat, and you see something that's just out of place, and you want to try uninstalling that app, how do you do that? Let's cover that. So, oh, what would be a good one? Oh, I'll get rid of Google. Let's get rid of Google. So I've got this Google app over here. <clears throat> I would use the laser pointer, but it doesn't work very well. And it doesn't show up on the TV. So over here, I've got a Google app. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need it. I'm just going to uninstall it. I haven't used that thing in a while. So how do I do that? The way that you uninstall an app is you'll tap on the icon for it and then hold. So you're going to press down and then hold until you see everything start to jiggle. Everything is going to start dancing and wiggling around. And you'll notice that you get these little X's that come up next to it. Anything that has an X, you can uninstall. And just do that by pressing that little X. And then you'll get a little confirmation, are you sure you want to delete this? And you'll have the option to either back out, oops, I didn't mean to do that, or confirm and delete. In this case, I am going to confirm it, and I'm going to delete that app. So Google is now gone. I've officially uninstalled Google from my phone. For now, I'll probably put it back on later because I do like Google. And then once you're done uninstalling or making any adjustments, you can press the home button to get everything to stop wiggling. So right now, everything's wiggling. I press the home button and it goes back to normal. One more time, I'll hold the app. Everything starts to wiggle, home button, goes back to normal.
Now, let's say, hypothetically, you did uninstall something that you really wanted. You can go into the App Store, which is the, the blue icon. Uh, is this little guy here, little blue icon, mine has 29 updates pending uh, because I'm terrible about keeping my apps updated. Uh, I know Connor is cringing at me over there, uh, but yes. I have bad habits, so you'll notice that on my screen I have 386 unread emails, 590 <laughs> unread text messages. In fairness, I do on-call work, so half of those text, more than half of those text messages are just page outs from equipment. It's not stuff that I need to read, but I digress. Uh, if you uninstalled something accidentally and you want to reinstall it, We'll go into the App Store and we can go to search in the bottom right. So let's say, um, let's say I want to reinstall Google. I can do a search for Google and then you'll notice that next to it, it's got a little cloud with an arrow on it. A little bit hard to see because it's kind of small, but right here, it's just got the cloud with the little arrow pointing down. That means that I've already downloaded that at some point in the past. Okay. Not Google app. If, if it was an app that charged you when you originally downloaded it, it won't charge you again. It registers that you've already downloaded that once, so it's not going to cost money to download it again. The reason this is significant is if you bought an app, you don't need to feel like you're stuck having that app. Like, if I get rid of this, then I'll have to pay for it all over again. No, that's not the case. You're absolutely able to download it again. There will not be a second charge, as long as you're on the same account that you downloaded it in the first place. Uh, now, if we scroll down a little, you'll notice some of this stuff doesn't have the little cloud icon. Uh, in this case, I've got an app called Google Chrome, and you'll see it has an update next to it. That's one of the updates that I've been lazy about. Um, and then you'll, if you look a little lower, you'll see Google Photos, and that has an icon that says Get. That means I've never downloaded Google Photos, and so it's telling me that I can get that. There's no charge for it, it's free. And I don't think Google's going to have any paid apps. Let's find something that actually has a charge for it. Um, that's all free. Ah, here we go. So here's an app called In the Lake Go. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but <laughs> you can see it costs 99 cents. So. When we're in the App Store, you can see if there's a cost associated with the app, it'll show how much it costs right here. If there's no cost associated with the app, it'll just say Get. And if you've already downloaded it before, you'll see the cloud icon that I showed you before. But now let's say, let's say you've got a ton of apps. Like your screen is just completely covered with all the different apps that you've downloaded. So what I'm going to talk about now, just organizing and maintaining that stuff, is how to create folders that you can then group your apps into. So just as an example here, on my phone, I'm going to take a couple of the different apps that I have. Let's say we'll start with my uh, robot vacuum app, so my Roomba app. I am going to, once again, tap on that until everything starts wiggling. Then, while holding that down, I'm going to drag it over on top of another app. So in this case, I'm going to drag it on top of this app. I think it's the AdTran app. Uh, I'm going to dismiss that. After holding it on top of that other app for a second, a folder will automatically be created. I can let go and that app is added to the folder. 
Now in this case, Apple has decided to name that folder Lifestyle. It's honestly usually pretty good about figuring out what type of stuff you're putting in there and putting an appropriate title for it. So if I was to put a couple of sports apps together, it would probably name the folder Sports. But in the rare instances that it doesn't figure out what it's called, you can always rename it. So to the right of Lifestyle, there's a little X there. If I tap that X, if I tap in the right spot, then I can erase Lifestyle and put in there whatever I feel like calling it. And then once you're done, you can just hit the home button and everything will stop wiggling. So now when I go back, I have a folder that I named Hello. So we're talking about apps, how to manage them, uh, how they might impact the performance of the phone. Uh, one of the things that we can also do is we can clear the data. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going into settings and the specific app I'm gonna pick on this time is Safari because it, it actually has a, a good setting for this. So uh, some apps will store data on the phone and it does this to speed up the performance of that app. Uh, in this case, the one that I'm specifically talking about is Safari. Safari is a web browser. So it's an app that shows web pages. When it does that, when it shows a web page, it'll do two things. One, it'll keep a history that you've been to that web page. So if you ever want to go back to it, it'll have that in its history and knows how to bring that page back up. The second thing is it will keep what's called a cookie uh, from that web page. So what is a cookie? A cookie is like a little bit of a file with information about that page that it keeps on your phone. So the next time you go back to that page, it'll load that file and it'll, it'll show you what you're looking at. Where this comes in specifically is if you have any personalized stuff, uh, like if you've got a, a newsfeed set up on a, a web page that you go to, that cookie is what tells it what content is on there. In some cases, the app will store so much information that it starts to get a little bit slow. Uh, maybe it's got too much history information or maybe the cookies are just starting to build up and it's, it's using up the memory on your phone to store all that information. Maybe you want that memory available for other apps to use or maybe you just need to clear it out so you can start fresh. So in this case, I'm in settings. I'm going to go to the Safari app. So I'm going to scroll down until I see Safari. There it is right there. That's the blue one kind of near the top there. I'm going to go into Safari and there's all different kinds of app options. I'm not going to talk so much about those, but we are going to scroll to the very bottom and you'll see this setting that says clear history and website data. And if I tap on that, It'll give me a little warning prompt, are you sure you want to do this? And I'll say yes, clear the history and data. And then that wipes out all that history and those cookies. So it'll free up that memory. Now, that's a setting that's specific to Safari. Other apps are going to have their own settings. They might not have something to clear the data and usage. Some apps will, some apps won't. If you encounter an app that doesn't have the ability to clear that, the way that you do clear it is by uninstalling the app and then reinstalling it. When you uninstall it, it wipes all that history and data out, and then when you reinstall it, it puts it on there fresh. So, if you've got an app that's really slow, it's, it's just not behaving right, if you go into the settings and there's no option to reset it or clear information on it, Try uninstalling and reinstalling. A lot of times that'll fix any app issues that go on. This is a wonderful tool that will help you uh, help you manage the power usage on the device. There's a few different things that we can get to in here, but first let me tell you how to bring this up. So from the bottom of your screen, and the really cool thing
thing with the control center, you can get to this whether the phone is locked or not. So from the bottom of the screen, swipe up. And then once we get into the control center, there's several different things that I want to talk about in here. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is screen brightness. We can control the screen brightness from this screen in the control center. That's this little icon here that's got a little image of the sun on it. That's a slider bar that you can use to turn the screen brightness up and down. It doesn't really reflect on the TV over there because the TV is set to a certain brightness. Uh, but if you play with that on your own device, you can see with it all the way up, the screen is much brighter. Brighter is easier to see, but it's also uh, going to use more battery to make the screen bright. Um, something I will kind of throw out is depending on uh, the model of phone that you have, some of these settings may or may not be available. It may look a little bit different. Um, so it should generally all kind of be similar but it might not show exactly what you're seeing here. One of the other things I want to point out, we've got these four icons up here. One looks like a little airplane. We have the wireless icon, which um, when we all joined Wi-Fi, you should have seen that in the upper corner on your device. There's this one here, which is cellular data. Uh, and then underneath that, there's this, which is the Bluetooth icon. And just quick little trivia fact for you, that's actually a combination of a couple of Nordic runes, which are uh, the guy who invented Bluetooth that's in honor of him. Little history piece there for you. Uh, so what are those? Let's cover that. The airplane icon allows you to put it into airplane mode. If you've ever been on a flight with your device, all of these different things are scanning constantly. If you've got Wi-Fi enabled, it's constantly looking for something to connect to, and then once it connects to that, it's constantly talking to it. So in this room here, there's a little disc back up on the ceiling over there. It looks like just kind of a white disc. Uh, that's our wireless access point. That's where the Wi-Fi is coming from. All of our devices, are currently talking to that disk. Even if you're not doing anything, uh, it's constantly communicating back and forth. It's what we refer to as chatter. So there's, there's a constant stream of chatter. Your phone is basically going, hey, am I still connected to Wi-Fi? And the AP is going, yep, you're still connected. And the phone says, cool, am I still connected to Wi-Fi? And the AP says, yep, you're still connected. Constantly. The same is true with cellular data. So this icon up here, your phone is constantly looking for cell towers to connect to. And it's going to try and find the best connection possible, the strongest connection that it can use. And it's going to talk to that cell tower. And it's just like the Wi-Fi. It's constantly going to be checking in saying, hey, are you there? We still connected? And the tower is going to reply, yep, you're connected all the time. And this happens in the background. It doesn't use up a ton of power. But if you've ever been on an airplane, 30,000 feet in the air, it's not finding any cell towers. So it is constantly sending out that request. Hey, I'm looking for a tower to connect to. I'm looking for a tower. And it will keep doing that. And it will just drain your battery until it's completely dead, trying to find a tower to connect to. You don't want it to do that when there is no tower for it to connect to. So if you enable airplane mode, which I'm not going to do because that will kill my connection to the TV over here, what that does is it turns off all of the data on the phone, cellular data, wireless data, and Bluetooth. Airplane mode is a great tool if you're not trying to connect to anything, you don't need to get anything from the internet or connect to any sort of network, airplane mode is good. You'll save a lot of battery by turning that on. Specifically, if you're on an airplane, which is probably why they called it airplane mode. Um, the other one that uh, I had a little bit of a question before the class started was Bluetooth. What is Bluetooth? Bluetooth is uh, a 
type of communication it's called an n f c a near field communication so sometimes you might have a headset or you might have some speakers or something like that that connects to your device through bluetooth bluetooth is great because it has a small range usually about 20 feet or so so it's not broadcasting a huge signal that everyone can connect to it's great for connecting those devices speakers or other such devices and it's a simple interface fairly secure because you'll need to confirm the connection on your device that said do you need to leave it on all the time probably not it's not necessary to have Bluetooth on unless you are connecting to peripheral devices like that. Um, one of the things that I've seen before, I'll go to uh, Blazer Games. And I'm sitting up at, at uh, the Moda Center. I hate the name of that. It, they should still call it the Rose Garden. But anyway, uh, sitting in the Moda Center, I'll just turn on Bluetooth and see what I can find. And I'll always find a dozen different people who have Bluetooth enabled on their phone. And, um, in most cases, they're secure. Some people have unsecured Bluetooth enabled on their phone, at which point, I've never done this. I've never done this. But you could theoretically connect to that and, and actually control their device using your phone. Um, it's not ethical, which is why I've never done that. In most cases, it's fine to leave it on. Apple, by default, has it secured, so it's not, I don't want you to think of it as any sort of a security threat to the device. If it's on, that's fine. If you're trying to save battery, turn it off. Just to recap, we've got airplane mode. If you don't need to use any type of data connection on your phone, turn on airplane mode. Save yourself some battery, save yourself some connection. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi you can turn on or off as needed uh, just remember if it's on your device is looking for something to connect to so if there's nothing for it to connect to but it is on it's scanning and, and that scanning is gonna use up some battery it's not the end of the world but if you're trying to save your battery like I was on my fishing trip you absolutely want to turn that off um, then we've, we've got cellular data so again, just like Wi-Fi, if it's not connected, it's looking for something to connect to. And then finally, as we talked about Bluetooth, you can turn Bluetooth off if you're not using it or leave it on, kind of your preference. If you're trying to save battery, you probably want to turn it off. Then we also talked about the screen brightness down here. You can slide it up and down to your preference, but just know the brighter it is, the more battery it's going to use. And then in case anyone's curious, uh, just to round out what we have on this uh, picture here, this would be volume. You can slide the volume up and down on your device. Screen mirroring allows you to cast to other Apple devices such as the TV over there. I heard someone say it, and, and I use this all the time, the flashlight, the shortcut to the flashlight especially when my kid drops something behind the couch and I have to get down there on my hands and knees and try and find it. Great tool. But be aware that if you do have your flashlight on, <laughs> tons of battery. You, you, can, you can kill your battery really quick with the flashlight app. Um, we've got, uh, oh, someone asked about this the last class. This is a, a fun one, not necessarily related to power usage or anything. This is the screen rotation lock. So if you've ever been, like maybe someone takes a picture, but it's sideways and you're trying to turn your phone so you can see it, but the screen keeps rotating to keep it sideways, you can lock that rotation down so that when you turn your device, the screen doesn't automatically rotate. Uh, that's a huge headache for me. From time to time, I'll, I'll get screenshots of stuff and try to turn your neck so that you can see it not always fun. The moon is do not disturb. If you have do not disturb enabled, you won't get notifications. Calls will go straight to voicemail. Um, basically, you won't be disturbed. 
that fishing trip story that I was telling you about, um, as we were on our way back, my father-in-law showed me his phone. He had an iPhone as well. Mentioned a couple of issues that he was having. I said, no problem, I'll take a look. So I pulled off the case and I was messing around with a couple of settings on the phone, cleaned a couple of things up for him, handed it back to him. Oh, okay, thanks. A couple of days later, I get a call from my mother-in-law, his wife, uh, saying, oh, John's phone hasn't worked for the last couple of days. <laughs> so we go in and I find out that I accidentally turned Do Not Disturb on on his phone. <laughs> he didn't know where the setting was to turn it off. So I helped him turn it off and then he thanked me profusely, talked about how I was so great with this stuff. And I said, yeah, no, thanks, no problem. By the way, I kind of did that, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving along though, uh, we've covered some of the control center stuff. This is great shortcut. Uh, just to reiterate, you can get to that control center from any screen, the lock screen, even if you're in an app, you just swipe up from the bottom and you can get to the control center. Makes it really easy to get to that flashlight. So iCloud services are services that Apple has built in to their operating system. Uh, these are things that are native to the device. And depending on what version of iOS you're using, you should have these. If, if you're on the latest version, your device should have all of these. Uh, now, I'll show you how to turn them on and off and we'll briefly kind of touch on what they do. The main thing with the iCloud services, for the, the sake of this class and what we're talking about, is I want you to be aware that they exist, and that if they exist and they're turned on, they are using resources on the device. Now, in some cases, that might not be a big deal. Uh, they might not be using very much battery or data, uh, so, Leaving it turned on is probably no big issue. But, again, we're talking about optimizing things. So if things seem to be running slow, if you're really trying to save your battery, you might want to go in and disable a couple of these. So real quick rundown. Uh, some of the services that iCloud has, there's Drive. Drive is used for backing up files. When we talk about the cloud, we're... We are talking about storing things, but it's where we're storing them. So, the old model used to be, like with computers and stuff, you would have local memory on the computer, a hard drive or something that you would store all your data to. Or if you go back far enough, floppy disks. You would have some sort of, I used those. Uh, but you would have some sort of storage device on, on the computer or device itself. And then once that got full, you would either get more or clean stuff off. When we're talking about the cloud, we're talking about storing stuff out on the internet. So if I take a picture on my phone and I want to make sure that picture gets saved, yes, I'll have a local copy on my phone, but it's also going to get backed up to the cloud. That means it's stored on a server farm in Montana and another server in Florida and another set of servers that might be in Europe somewhere. It's out on the internet. It's backed up. It's saved in multiple locations. So if I was to drop my phone in a bucket of water, I don't lose that picture. I get another phone. I can pull that picture down again. Uh, honestly, storing stuff in the cloud is a great way to secure data. It's a great way to back things up. So a lot of these iCloud services we're talking about are really great features. Uh, some of them are, are things you probably want to take advantage of. Some of them are probably things you're taking advantage of and you don't even know it. A lot of the times they just work. They're in the background running, doing their thing, and you don't have to worry about them. But real quickly, a, a breakdown of what those different services are. We've got Drive. Drive is used for backing up files. There's photos. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It backs up your photos for you. Uh, mail. Apple has their own iCloud mail service. It, it's an email thing. Honestly, I've never met anyone who really uses it. Everybody kind of uses their own mail provider. We've also got contacts. It'll back up your contacts to the cloud. Calendar. Uh, 
any calendar settings, reminders, Safari, which we talked about the website data and stuff from Safari. It'll back that up to the cloud. Uh, notes, a lot, of, uh, a lot of our managers and stuff around the company, when they take their phone to a meeting, they'll type out notes and that all gets backed up to the cloud. So if something were to happen to their device, they don't lose any of those notes that they need from the meeting. Um, whoops, wrong button. News, wallet, Those, honestly I don't really use these. Uh, wallet is, it allows you to store payment information on the device. Then we have backup. Backup is actually a great one. Um, it'll back up all the settings on your device and honestly, if, if you lose your device or it gets destroyed or somehow becomes non-functional, uh, you go out and get a new device, you can restore that new device from the backup that's saved and it's like you never lost it. Um, if I was to lose this phone, I could go out tomorrow, get another phone, as I'm going through the setup, it'll recognize, hey, you're signed in with the same Apple ID, do you want to restore it from this backup that you had saved? I say yes, and it's restored. It's almost exactly how I had it before. But find my iPhone. That one, absolutely use it. It's great. Uh, one of the things that I used to do, we've kind of moved past having iPads now, but all our techs in the field had iPads that they would go out with. Um, and there were several occasions where they lost their iPad out in the field, didn't know where they left it. Maybe they visited three or four different places doing installs. Oops, came back to the office, my iPad's not in the truck where I had it. Find My iPhone lets you go online, you can sign in with your Apple ID, and then it will tell you the last known location of that iPad or iPhone. Um, this is great. It's helped me save probably a half dozen different devices. We were able to locate them. So, okay, your device was last at this intersection. They were able to go back out and find it. Um, honestly, I highly recommend having Find My iPhone turned on. It, it's a great tool. Of all of these, the two that I would strongly, strongly suggest you have turned on are Backup and Find My iPhone. So we've got all these different services. Maybe you want to turn them on, maybe you don't. Let's take a look at that. So if we go into settings, and then I believe as Connor pointed out in the last class, it should be under accounts and passwords. And then you'll see something that says iCloud. <clears throat> so just to, to show how to get there one more time. I'm going to go into settings. And then in settings, I'm going to scroll until I see accounts and passwords. And then once I'm in accounts and passwords, I have iCloud. And then iCloud, a couple of things to note here. You'll see the amount of storage space you have. In this case, I have 4.4 gigs available. I, I really don't use that much. Um, and then you'll see everything that's enabled or disabled. So if it's green, that means it's turned on. If you don't want to turn it on, you can slide it and turn it off. So as an example, let's say I want to turn off reminders. I, I don't need it, I don't use it. I can just tap the button and now reminders is off. I can choose the option of keeping any data on my phone or deleting it. In this case, I really don't have anything. So I'm gonna delete it from my phone and there we go. My reminders are officially turned off. Now again, down at the bottom, there's iCloud Backup and Find My iPhone. Highly recommend that you have those on. If they're not turned on, you might want to think about turning it on. Just remember, as far as the iCloud services go, 
a lot of times they're just running in the background, they're doing what they're doing, you don't really need to interact with it. They'll, they'll happily just do what they feel like they need to do. The only time I would suggest you really want to go in here is when you're, you're trying to optimize your device, you're trying to save battery or save data on the device, then you might want to look at what's actually enabled and turned on. For most average use, probably don't even need to worry about it. One of the things that your phone will do, or has the ability to do, is automatically update all your apps. Now remember, back on my home screen, my app store shows that I have 29 pending updates. That's because I don't have automatic updates enabled. Automatic updates, when it sees that there's an update available, it'll just go ahead and do it. Your phone will automatically pull the update for that app, download it, and update it. Where this can get kind of annoying, if you're on a connection that isn't necessarily fast, and your phone is doing updates in the background, that will slow down what you're trying to do in the foreground. So if, for instance, you're using Safari, you're trying to get to a website, and you have another app that's updating in the background, it'll slow things down. Um, additionally, it'll use data that maybe you're not wanting to use. So we want to double check, I, I will say, having automatic updates enabled is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, in most cases, it's probably a good thing. Just set it, and you don't have to worry about keeping your stuff up to date. The device will do it on its own. Uh, but as we're talking about optimizing things, if things are going slow, maybe there's an update running in the background, this is how you can disable those from automatically happening. So we're going to go into settings, and then we're going to go into the iTunes and App Store, which, oops, did I scroll past it? There it is. So iTunes and App Store, and you'll see that it has updates, but you'll notice on mine it's turned off. So a couple of different things I want to show you here. One, you'll see these things from music, apps, books and audiobooks, and updates. Uh, if you have multiple iOS devices, so you've got an iPad and an iPhone, and these are turned on, for instance, apps. If you have apps turned on, if you download an app on your phone, that same app will be pushed to your iPad if that's turned on. If you download a song off of iTunes, that same song will be downloaded to iTunes on your other device if that's turned on. And then likewise with books and audiobooks. Updates, if you have that enabled and an update comes out for that app, it'll automatically download that. In most cases, it's fine to leave that on. I would suggest if you're in a situation where you're not trying to uh, maintain your battery usage or really be strict about your data usage, I would say probably leave that on. The one that I think you should be really careful about is down here it says use cellular data. If that is enabled, it will use your cellular data to do updates. That's a bad idea, in my opinion. Unless you really need to get that update, it's a bad idea to leave that setting on because your phone will just use your cell plan to download any updates. You'll run into your data caps, or in some cases, you'll incur overage charges from using more than your cap. Uh, highly recommend you do not turn on the used cellular data. It, it can lead to some sticky situations that you might end up costing you. So I would recommend, unless you absolutely need it, do not turn on the used cellular data. To recap what we talked about today, uh, we talked about how to adjust the screen brightness using the slider in the control center. Remember, brighter, more visible uses more battery. You might want to adjust that to where you're comfortable with that mix between battery usage and visibility. 
Um, turn off data and Wi-Fi if you don't need it. Like if you're flying somewhere, turn that stuff off. Otherwise, it's going to keep scanning, trying to find something to connect to. Uh, use lo low power mode. If your battery is almost dead, you get to that 20% and it comes up saying, do you want to use low power mode? Yes. Yes, you do. Uh, or if you're in a situation where you forget your charger for a weekend out at sea, um, <laughs> you probably want to turn on low power mode at that point, too. Um, and then also uninstall any apps that are hogging power or just behaving weird. Uninstall. Maybe try reinstall if you really want that app. But it's a good thing if it's using an inordinate amount of battery, try uninstalling it. And then as far as saving memory, if you've got an app that's using up a bunch of memory, try uninstalling and reinstalling. Uh, or generally just close your apps every once in a while. Uh, Disable any iCloud services that you don't really need. Um, it's not a big deal if they're running, but if you're trying to optimize things, disabling them doesn't hurt. Uh, and then of course, automatic updates. If you don't need them running, you can disable them and absolutely disable the used cellular data for updating. If your phone uses a, a lithium ion battery, which older versions of those batteries, you could theoretically overcharge them and that could actually uh, cause less power. It, it could, uh, what's Charge the word them. I'm looking for? Uh, full power is less than full power. Yes, you, you, it would degrade the lifespan of the battery. So over time, consistently overcharging it could hurt that battery. Technology has come a long way since then. Uh, the short answer is it doesn't matter. You can leave your phone plugged in all day, it's not going to hurt the battery.